Hey man, 420 rapper Vito Banger, the new album coming, written in Bud. We're selling it a different way. You're going to have to get it a different way. And uh, y'all stay tuned for details. Big Vito Banger. Hey, Vito, Napa Roots, whatever's going on this 2020. Shout out to my son. He's a Kentucky Wildcat signee. And I'm taking time out to raise kids. I got another one on the way, All American. Ball players, she a freshman doing a thing. Shout out to my other kids, my grandson, Salsa Montana, my granddaughter, Navy. Man, the family's growing. That's what's up. Uh, Chill, man, what it do, man? Not much, man. I'm here on behalf of Wise Words. It's a new podcast, uh, vlog, whatever you want to call it. I want to sit down with, you know, local entrepreneurs, uh, small business owners, and artists, and uh, people in the community that's had a big impact. And, I mean, to me, personally, you can't mention Kentucky without mentioning Nappy Roots, and then you can't mention Nappy Roots without mentioning Big V. Oh, man. So, uh, man, for everybody that's been under a rock for the last 15, 20 years, why don't you uh, tell us real quick who you are and uh, what, you, what you've done. Oh man, I'll dribble, man. This Vito, man. Vito, Big V, Napper Roots, Vito Banger. The voice of the Pope people. Oh, got a whole lot of names, few of them they call me to my face. <laughs> um, 20 years, man. 25 years ago, set out, well, in 1987, started rapping, whatever. And it was, it was my main talent, I think. But playing football in a small town kind of made me popular and got my numbers up. And I met a lot of people playing football, a lot of walks of life, and a lot of people met me. And uh, needless to say, man, I went to Eastern Kentucky because I could run the ball. But my homeboy went to Western Kentucky because he was a more fit for them, named Sean Taylor or whatever. And I had went through a series of life events in college. Um... I was a new father at 18 or whatever, tore up my ankle um, at this time. So come back home in Bowling Green, my homeboy was going to West, and he was like, man, there's some cats that do what you do. And was serious about getting out of here. Some boys from Louisville, well, you know, a collective. Um, they would party every Thursday night or whatever, and we hung out and formed this group called Nappy Roots in 1995. Signed a record deal in 98 with Atlantic Records. Um, did some developing then, went to a eight ball MJG, Trick Daddy, Lil John, you know, chilling circuit thing till we got good. Okay. Then there was a big, big act out of St. Louis named Nelly, Country Grandma, mm -hmm. really like Moses, who opened up the sea for us to walk across as a country artist, you know. Kentucky was too north to be south and too east to be west, and smack dab in the middle. So nearly opened the doors of St. Louis, Atlanta, come down the road and get the next best thing smoking, which was Nappy Roots. And hell, I didn't know that not having a big brother at that time was a disadvantage. But to be raw and the one who wrote all in all po folks, a good day and several other big records. And two had road country roads at that time and a and r from Atlantic, New York City or LA to be interested in scribing Nappy Roots. So we signed a record deal, we on tour, we developed and all of a sudden come up with this record called All No. And it changed lives forever. Rest is history, ago. right? Rest, rest is history. <laughs> awesome. Uh, man, I'm, well, we start this out after the little intro. I wanna, uh, we kind of base this off of wise words. So I want to know like a favorite quote or uh, saying that you've kind of lived your life by. God give us life to enjoy all things, not all things to enjoy life. And, it, and it's just that for me, like, in order to love joy, you're going to have to know what pain is. And in order to have a real lit up world, you're going to have to know what dark is. And so everything's in the season. What I learned about rap, music, life, football, basketball, um, every, everybody likes their time, you mm -hmm. know, especially with music. When you 
first getting girls and you smoking weed in the best times of your life, you're gonna like that music for the rest of your life. I don't give a fuck yeah. who come out or whatever's going on. You're gonna like your time. Yeah. You know, so I can agree with that. So, you know, that's what I've learned. So, like, I want to kind of draw the connection here between I guess business, entrepreneurship, and artistry in today's music. Like I don't really believe that, uh, I mean, I, I guess it can happen, but what's your thoughts on, um, uh, you know, the, the artist being his own business? Like you're going to have to be because yeah. the label ain't being that no more. And then guys like myself being the last hard copy artist, you know, when I say the hard copy, that's the CD. That's mm -hmm. the one that we're burning before we, you know, take seven hard copy artists. Yeah. I'm being the last one of those. Like, those were stone age the way they do business now. Now cats is getting scans and they selling this and they branded with this. So you got to definitely know who you are mm -hmm. um, demographically. You got to know what your music stands for, who is it selling to and what are the things that accompany it. So yeah, it's, we're at a time where you can really be creative. Uh, NBA, NFL is showing us how to become more massive marketed cats and, and appeal to people who really got the dime for what you're doing. Right, right. When you first started, who, what was the inspiration to you? Who, who inspired you musically? Um, inspired, like early going on, I was into, um, I guess Scarface and the Ghetto Boys. Okay. Early, like when I was sophomore or whatever, Big Daddy came early. You know, I'm in Makes junior sense. high in 88, you know, ain't no half stepping, Dougie Fresh, you know, things like that. New kids on the block. I had older sisters, so we listened to girl music in my house. <laughs> Biz Marquis and all the hip songs, you know, the girls listen to. Gotcha, gotcha. And then started smoking weed in junior high. Yeah, junior high, getting drunk. Then I started listening to this shit. I was born on a Wino Street anyway, so I, I was familiar with Joe Simon, Johnny Teller, and Barry White, Marvin Gaye, you know, the Wino so card playing yeah. music, you know. So right. once I became a rapper, about 87, and I actually realized I wanted what I really wanted to do, and, and more people from me kept hearing me at schools or back of the buses or cafeterias. By 93, I had a girlfriend. And she brought me this CT. Uh, there was a guy named Eight Ball and MJG coming out hard. I she remember. said, baby, this is ain't no bullshit rap here. You gonna love this shit. He's, he got a demeanor like you. And I was like, wow. Somebody who I could finally relate to, you know, candy paint and hoes and gold teeth, <laughs> weed, and, you know, and just other vibes. Yeah, it was, it was just cool. Kind of in a way. Yeah, and it yeah. wasn't gangster, it was reality. Yeah. And, like, I didn't want to, from that point on, shit, guidance counselor asked me at school, what you gonna be, a motherfucking rapper? <laughs> uh, something more realistic with that holler. Yeah. That's realistic for me. Well, to play off of that, if Vito wasn't Big V and you wasn't a rapper, what would you do? What I, would you have done? In my earlier life, I, before the weed, before, like, it's hard to say that now because rap freed me. Like, I know that there's rules for them and there's rules for us. <laughs> and, you know, yeah. once, you, once you're on that side of the coin, you're like, I was really a buster. I was really square. I was really sucker. You know, and you, my country, tears at the end, raise your hand, and you wanted to be this ambulance driver, uh, an orderly, you know, and make 80 grand a year and think that's going, but never be out of the box, and they never teach you about life. So, man, after I became a rapper and free, and could, I paid the police. Hell, y'all keep him that way. I'm fucking <laughs> reefer back here. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, once you realize, man, money run this motherfucker, I w I'm embarrassed to tell you the square life I thought I was. You know what I mean? Like, now I just want to be free. I understand and, that. And, and, and work with what I do to make money. 
Man, now you know a rapper, we all out hustler. And we selling pussy down the chapstick. <laughs> and so as we rap whatever we're gonna do, all legal, but you know, and really get your feet down now. So now that being free and being around the country a whole lot and knowing how things go, like damn, I must have been out of my damn bag. <laughs> like when you asked me that I was embarrassed. <laughs> like, man, I was a square dude thinking of nine to five and I could live like a white man. <laughs> and then they didn't tell you as a nigga in class, you know, a certain ceiling you ain't gonna get to. And you're entertainment, you're a football player, you do music, you that man motherfucker don't wanna hear nothing about your real life. You sing all now the way I heard it on that jukebox. I paid thirty dollars. I don't give a fuck about your sister just died mm -hmm. or, or you arguing with your bitch or, or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, Kids is bullshit. Personal sides out of it. Yeah, motherfucker won't you there in that town that Friday night or that Christmas Eve or whatever the fuck. And then you realize, okay, what you are. And we glorify it and things like being a fat chubby kid. And kind of slick game. I thought I would, you know, decent chin, I can fuck. And it's like, as an artist, that's what you wanted to get. Mama clean up the house, soul train dances, jabbery, and I'm gonna fuck one of them, you know. Mm -hmm. So I get to that level. Let's see, all right, I got that. And then, what we set out to be is dirty talking young men under a shade tree in the country. That can be had. What motherfucker didn't tell you about that credit score. And damn, take the money, the hoes come with you. Or good times come with you. So now, if you'd ask me, now I'm going to be a, an encounter. <laughs> or I'm going to have a bunch of motherfuckers around me from high school that's smarter than me. Right, right. And they're going to do accounting, they're going to do marketing, and this one's going to do this, and then we're going to bring my I am the entertainment. But I'm not dumb enough to try to run my own ship, but I know I need my ship ran. Yeah. You know? Take so, some machines sometimes. Yeah, so now it's like, all right, I got a team. I got 3.5 million people who know who I am. And the second round for Vito, and still got that music to stay. This time I'm attaching things to my music that you would buy if you are my age and the rest of that shit don't hold no value. Something good to I read a lot of books, man. I feel like any any successful person in any field reads, reads a lot. Yeah. Do you got one or two books that you would like recommend or one that you would consider? Uh, All about the music business. You I gotta like learn that. Uh, if you're an artist and you probably, I don't know what thrives other artists to be other artists like. You hear jingles. Or you hear somebody wrote a hook or um I don't know what they see. Like for me, every song, every thesis, for me to touch on it, I gotta know about it. Mm -hmm. I won't rap about it. Um I got a million dollars in a week. You ask me what I do with a million dollars in a week. <laughs> I ain't, you know, I, I, I get out of my element. I like, what's the matter now? You used to sell his daddy dope. You know, what's the rush now? You used to sell her mama dope. And they grew up hard, you know. That's a different channel. That's yeah, a different yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I got you. Yeah, so that's V, man. I don't. Uh, yeah. So, so what would you consider a bad recommend, a recommendation, or bad advice that people in your industry get? Um, fake it till you make it. Um, there's a tomorrow. You can do this forever. That's a big one, right there. This is like playing pro football, basketball. You know. Moves off the court matters. Um, Are you saying the moves off the court don't matter? Or? They do. They do. They do. They they yeah, help okay. to carry. Rap is a career. It's a brand. Yeah, and then you know if your brand ain't solid or you was just some act that the label sign, you ain't be here today and gone tomorrow. Your roots got to be planted, and plus your fans. Are, 
if, if you notice, if a man's going to put two or three million dollars behind your name and your brand identity, he thinks your music can change things. Mm -hmm. And then most of the guys here lately don't have that behind their music because their music is, it sounds like what you call it, it's in that vein. If you listen to the radio now, all of the production sound like y'all produced by one person. Right. And we right. for this shit. So I don't listen to the radio as an older man. Yeah. Uh, especially when they call and ask about your playlist and shit and add to theirs. Um, I might listen to soft rock a lot. More 70s and 80s, the sound if I'm in Bowling Green, most definitely. Um, Motown if I'm on CS, you know, something like that. I'm maybe the Sway Show. Some, you know, there's something with some substance. Gotcha. You know, I, I like some of the new talent they say in that shit, especially the girl, the big girl that's comfortable. Put the same single, no man for the middle I can. And like, that's the original shit out there. The rest of that shit is, you sound like what you call. Mm -hmm. They all sound like Yeah, the yeah. witch call do that too? Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> you yeah, know. So, yeah, it's just, I don't know. Um, hip hop comes and goes. I, I don't laugh at today's hip hop because we grew up on hip hop. Pee Wee Herman. Everybody got that kind of rap, but I'm, I represent a more mature rap. Life after Gates talking about we supposed to be in love. Well, let me tell you about the bitch, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you know. Oh, man. You know, so everything's everything. That's what's up. Do you, uh, man, you got like a mentor or someone you've looked up to uh, that's just kind of, you know, guided you through this? I, I ain't answer shit you asking me. <laughs> uh, mentor, <laughs> mentors, people I follow doing this music, Bobby Jones early. Mahalia Jackson, Rita Franklin, Buster Rams for breaking away from the leaders of the new school and doing his thing. Uh, Jay-Z for not starting on top but working his way to it. Ice Cube for recognizing they bullshitting me and I am the motherfucking man in this. Uh, Dre for waiting out of the situation. Muddy Waters, there's a whole lot of people their stories are similar to mine. Right, right. So, and then you asked me after that, I told you my influence. Well, well I can't smoke doing these interviews. <laughs> no, no, you good, fam. Oh, uh, well, we kind of skip around. All right. What did you ask me last? Me Mentor. Mentor. Skinny DeVille was my big brother at this. Okay. okay. Uh, put me on my first airplane. Showed me I didn't have to rap so gangster, so rough. Let him know you. Mm. So it was okay to be a common man because that what we rap. And it's okay to have a hilltop of Jersey because that's where you're from. And it's okay to, to love your state first. Like, we then we went to New York and see how they rep their shit. And LA rep is. Atlanta rep theirs. And Louisville can't rep theirs. And it was just like, we got to meet more people that just know them. You know, common folk, cool people, Walmart shopping. And so, it, it was cool, like happiness wasn't no distant place or some beach with sandy feet that you got to take a shower in the next 10 minutes, you know, mm -hmm. Kentucky were good enough. So that was my mentor, Skinny, in the early beginning until it was like Michael Jordan and Kobe, you know. Yeah. Okay, I can do that too. Maybe jump a little higher. Mm -hmm. Maybe my jump shot's wet. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. and then after, after that, man, that was the first album after we got to it. My mentor became something else. Turned on me. Um, you know, if motherfucker ain't going with you, they gonna hate on the trip. So, again, man, I, I learned a lot. Like, man, I learned a lot. People that's going with you don't necessarily stay with you. Oh, no. So, if you had the opportunity to work with anyone that you haven't yet, who would be one artist or band or whatever that you want to collaborate with? Uh, they did. Prince, <laughs> <laughs> Mike, um, shit, Rita. Oh. Man, it's still one that's alive. I'm trying, I'm <laughs> trying, I'm trying. I work with Alfred and Sadiq, I work with Banner, I work with John, I work with Kanye. Um. I guess an artist today, 
Probably be Stevie Nicks, Fleetwood Mac. All right. Hey, I'd like to hear that. Or a big Snoop Dogg. Steve, speaking of, man, I just seen the video last week where Snoop was uh, jamming out to uh, Po Folks. How'd that make you feel? Man, like, when another great artist listens to somebody who listens to them, like, wow. And I vibe to Jenny Juice like that. Yeah. And to see I ain't vibe to Po Folk. Like, wow. All right, that, that was all right. Really felt good because I listened to Curtis Mayfield or Snoop or Dre, G thing, you know, the same way back on Nug because mm -hmm. you know we buy that rip shit, you know. Come on now. And growing up, growing up on Snoop Dogg since sophomore 11th grade and to have him listen to your music now as an older man, feel like I can touch the rim again. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's see here. This is uh, one of my favorite questions, man. This is one I, I want to see and dig a little deeper in on, man. But uh, what's a favorite failure of yours? Something that taught you? A favorite failure? Yeah. Um, falling in a relationship, I guess. You know how we come from picket fence and uh, station wagon kind of view of how you view TV. And... To actually try that and fail, and then for it to be another road for you to take, and another a bond with your kids, without, let's say, a marriage or a close relationship, and to know you're just as much as daddy, without that, that was big for me. Walking away from Nappy Roots after a good day song that McDonald's is playing, and to still have confidence to put out the same caliber level of music when, let's say, Nappy Roots going into another direction. They live Southern lives. They live in Atlanta. I'm a country boy, Walmart shopper. And to actually survive that divorce. Gotcha. You know, like those were beautiful failures for me. Or to not win a Grammy and, and to be there and to understand the story of the popular guy wins the Grammy, not the best music. That's true. You, you know, <laughs> so to, to understand those things and 10 years later to where Grammy talk in my town is is, is common now. Cage the Elephant brought one to home. Like awesome. 10 years ago, Vito then was there. Mm -hmm. And now for Bowling Green, Kentucky to have some Grammy award winners from that same era, that same time, 10 years later of, okay, I can do it because they did it. Like, those are the biggest failures for me. I mean, definitely paved the road and opened some doors for yeah. the whole community and all genres, if you ask me. So now, it'd be my turn. Maybe the woohoo will play my music like they do Caged Elephant um, and the other stations in Kentucky. Y'all ever gonna do some music with Caged Elephant? Man, I got a song recorded already with Matt. Um, and we always talk about it when we're at Tid Bars. You know, if you're from Bowling Green, the, the, the meeting up spot, if you're on neutral ground, is Tid Bars. And we cut up every time I see them when they're in town, uh, when I'm back. And we talk of it. It's just Bobo because I'm always busy. So I'm sure it's coming. Yeah. So I'm sure it's we'll, coming. We'll stay on the lookout for that for sure. Um, and so, what would be like a perfect day, daily routine for, for Vito Vanga? Man, eyes open, feet hit that flow, tell God thank you. The blunt I had, I forgot about last night, is still there. Uh, baby's got a ball game later. It's a Friday, I'm going to get my hair cut. Um... Publishing check out there that I didn't know about. Was there? It's only eleven o'clock now. I'm grinning on my way to the liquor store. Mm -hmm. Catch a plate over Fifth Street, Broadway, down over there. And my man Dalton's cooked me a nice omelet or something. I get good nine second shot of liquor. Um, catch a ball game. My kids starting in. Then we're going to go watch Tyrone Dunn sing later with some available people, you know, drink and smoke real good night. That's me just 
vibing in bowling green. Like that's a perfect day for me at forty years old. You that's know? What's up. That's what's up. So, um, what are you working on now? What get you out of bed? What's what's, what's what? up now? I'm gonna wake up. I exercise. I got a new movie dropping February 14th, Don't Shoot the Messenger. The movie chasing now, one of the first one I'm starring in, 45 seconds. Um, bank robbery movie in Florida in the 90s. Really interesting tale. Um, with that coming, I got a new album dropping February the 14th, written in Bud. Um, February 14th. Oh, Valentine's Day is my birthday. Uh, definitely OG, once you ain't 30 no more. Um, like I said, doing that, I got a new strand of reefer coming out, watermelon, chicken, and grits. The strand, higher than any resolution you smoked, is prettier than a, than a white rose on Mother's Day. You know, and, uh, so doing some things, man, I've been busy. I've been busy. We look forward to seeing it all. Uh, where, where can people find, find you? Oh, uh, YouTube Watch. I'm, I'm Vito Bango, Big V of Nappy Roots. On uh, Twitter, um, I'm Big Vito Bango. Tinder, if you want that, that good feel, and we'll match. You know what it is. We can get down. Uh, www.swinglife.com. Um, ML Film Specialist. Um, like I said, I'm everywhere. I'm doing everything. Doing, uh, like I said, a lot of adult entertainment. King of BBC for the white girls and black ones too. Um, it's just going down, man. Like I said, I'm getting my frame back. I'm gonna take drops and cut, lose 40 more pounds, get that 25 year old chin. Hit the road in March. Fucking with um, my dog Static and Jason out there. We ram sick. Mm -hmm. I'm Denver, Colorado. Mm -hmm. So going definitely gonna do Denver, New Smoke Town, New not Motown, I said Smoke Town. Mm -hmm. Gonna hang out with my dog Madison. Um uh, everybody in Royal, my flow was made for Kofax. And that's the busiest street in Denver. And uh, definitely gonna bring it to that. I'm working on new grow houses here in Kentucky. We're waiting for the law to change. I just now got been enlightened, you know, for my CBC, oh, food, hot sauce infused, weed infused. Like I said, the life oh, of a black. Hot sauce infused, huh? Yeah, life of a black hippie, <laughs> you know, that's done tasted better, like pimples and corn, not salt, you know. <laughs> so we, we doing some things, man. Man, I'm going to wrap this up with this question. Who you got for the Super Bowl, man? Oh, shit. My favorite quarterback. It was Joe Montana. Uh, uh, I believe defense will beat our fans. And I'm proud of Andy. I don't know if he'll get out smart at this time. He's been here. And I believe every dog has a day like Dirk and Whiskey. This might be 13 years, you know. It, it might be time for the sun to shine. But I'm betting with the 49ers. Uh, you heard it here first. Big B's got the 49ers. And I appreciate you holding it down. Puff, puff. Yes, sir. Pass. Hey, man, 420 rapper Vito Banger, the new album coming. Written in Bud. We're selling it a different way. You're going to have to get it a different way. And um, y'all stay tuned for details. Big Vito Banger, Gmail. I mean, you can hit me up on Gmail, whatever you at. Vito, Napper Rules, whatever's going on this 2020. Shout out to my son. He's a Kentucky Wildcat. Sandy, and I'm taking time out to raise kids. I got another one on the way, all American ball player. She a freshman doing a thing. Shout out to my other kids, my grandson Salsa Montana, my granddaughter Navy. Man, the family's growing. That's what's up.
take it. Sipping emotion, puff 